Get back. 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 Forty seconds. Impact. 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 Good morning, everyone. We are here on day two of the Magnetoon uh, season finals. And as you can see here, I am trying out the new uh, Voodoo, which I will talk about more in a future video. But this uh, essentially was a barrel action that was replaced because of some issues. And it's basically brand new. I only have about 100 rounds through the rifle at the moment. So uh, I'm gonna try it for the, the first few stages and if it runs smoothly, I'll use it for the whole day. Um, but fingers crossed, it's gonna run fine uh, because the last one I had was basically not fit for competition use as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I have a new uh, Minox scope on it. So we'll see how it runs. Uh, you know, people say don't change a bunch of stuff, especially in the middle of the match, but I am not following that rule today. Thanks to everybody for a good day yesterday. Hopefully the rain's gonna hold out today. It looks like it's maybe gonna be like point one of a millimeter, a little bit later, and you know, just kind of sprinkle. <laughs> so, I, I don't know what that is in MOA. Who uses MOA anyways? I do. There's, no, there's an elite group of us. <laughs> good with the high numbers. We'll see. Uh, once again, we want to thank Trigger Tech for the title sponsor for the year for the entire uh, series. And also Bullseye North for providing uh, all the awards and everything and sponsoring the points race. As well as Odell, 511, Bergara, Govic Tactical, IDTS, Very Precision Steel, Vortex, Korth Group, US Optics, Great Birch, Armageddon Gear, Tactical Ordnance, BNT Industries, IBI, EM Precision, uh, Kestrel, Hirsch, uh, Precision, Yeti, Voodoo, Lab Radar, MDT, Margaret Metalworks, Red Knob, and Kadex. Alright, one other thing <laughs> that I forgot to mention. The mover motor did blow out yesterday. We cleaned it up, it got it running again, but then it stopped. So I think it's just dead, dead now. You need a volunteer for that then? Yeah, if you want to go hold the target up with the deep post and start running back and forth at a consistent one and a half miles per hour, uh, we can do that. Uh, so anyways, if you get up there, just skip that one, keep going, uh, and I'll just delete that for the end of the uh, for the end of the match for the tablet. So, anyways, the goal is over the winter time for the next year is just rebuild it entirely, new motor, new track, new everything. Uh, so then that way, it's just we don't have to deal with this ever, ever again. So. On day two here, our squad started off where we left off on stage 15 titled Slanted. Now we actually had a couple shooters shoot the stage on day one before the match ended. So if you notice a significant weather change in the footage, that's why we had some shooters shoot at day one and we finished up the squad on day two. So stage 15 had two targets at 121 yards and 160 yards. On the engage command, the shooter would shoot from the upper position on the left slanted sawhorse and shoot the targets near, far, near. They would repeat the sequence on the lower position of the left sawhorse. They would then transition to the lower position on the right sawhorse and engage the targets far, near, far and repeat the sequence one more time, far, near, far from the upper position on the right sawhorse. So that was a total of 12 rounds. Form. Twenty-five seconds. Impact. 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 
back. Get back. Oh, it was the post. Okay, it was the post. Oh, you were so close, man. <laughs> I'm moving there. Also, do you think the wind switched the retro popped up? It switched. Yeah. But it was so little, I held center every single one. Okay. Shoot it ready. Uh, shoot it ready. Stand by. Engage. Good back. Good back. You don't trust it. Good back. I don't. Not yet. We're just trusting the road. Probably do Not working. 40 seconds. I'm going to show clear. Got two for ten. Ten. Okay. Okay. Clear, Chris, you're up. Oh man. One stupid mistake that was. So uh, I shot the wrong target for one of my misses. Yeah, first stage of the day off of the two slanted no, sawhorse things. <laughs> Uh, I did a mental mistake, which is always the most frustrating thing. I shot the wrong target for one miss, and another miss, uh, I don't know, just uh, just bad trigger pull. There was one issue though, did you see it? It didn't eject. It's not looking good, but I'll run it for a couple more stages and see how it goes. But uh... Stage 16 was titled Tight. The reason for this name is because the first position was on a very small crossbar that wasn't exactly facing the target um, in an easy manner, so it was kind of a tight quarters to shoot from. On the engage command, the shooter would shoot the targets left to right with two shots each from that small crossbar on the right Home Depot rack. The shooter would then transition to the other Home Depot rack on the left and engage the targets from left to right with one shot each. This gave you a total of nine rounds. The three targets were all at 155 yards. in the way. Come back. Come back. Right, two rounds each here. Yeah. Spot it ready? Get it ready? ready. <laughs> Shoot it ready. Stand by. Engage. Impact. 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 
One minute. User error. User error. Safety's on. Did it eject? Yes. Impact. So now the shooter needs a spotter. Is that eight? Yeah. <laughs> For the chamber. <laughs> coach, coach. Can someone take this, please? Yeah. Stage went fairly well. I dropped one shot. Um, I had some rim lock because uh, the voodoo mags weren't loaded properly. And as you can tell, I'm going a little bit slower because I want to make sure it's ejecting. So it's playing some mental games with me, but the rifle shoots really nicely besides the fact that it doesn't always eject. So we're going to keep an eye on that. But I got eight of nine on, uh, on the Home Depot racks here. Stage 17, round and round. On the engage command, the shooter would engage the one target at 152 yards from each of the tank trap tips. The shooter would repeat the sequence two more times, giving a total of nine rounds. Inbox! 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 Inbox. Ready? Yeah, ready. Shooter ready. Spotter ready. Spotter ready. Stand by. Three, two, one. Engage. Impact. How much time do I have? Uh, 25 seconds. Impact. Impact. All right, I got you for uh, eight. Eight of nine. I'm loading so quick. So for the tank trap stage I just shot, it was nine shots at one target, but each shot you had to rotate through the uh, tank trap tips on the legs. I dropped one point again. <laughs> that one or two points just escaped me for all the, all the stages here. So I got eight of nine. Um, nothing too tricky. I was holding about half a mil for wind uh, off the right um, today. Yesterday we were holding left, so the wind changed for sure. And uh, the one shot I missed, um, I had a really bad like twitch in my entire body. It was like a chill down my spine and <laughs> threw my shot off. So uh, trying to clean a stage still. What else? Um, no tripods allowed, but you basically have to be like a psychopath to try and use a tripod on the stage anyway. So I just used the, uh, the good old pump pillow and the arc rail mounted Kev fat bag.
One pop. Salvage number one. It's the tenets of voodoo. One pop. Three. One pop. One pop. <laughs> Stage 18 was titled More Barrels. On the Engage command, the shooter would engage the targets near to far with two shots each from a position of their choice. The shooter would then repeat the sequence again from a second position of their choice but could not be the same position as the first. There was three targets at 141 yards, 180 yards, and 205 yards. Get back. Get back. Get back. Clean. Yay. Wow. Clean with uh, seven seconds. That last bud. I think I took the last four without breathing. <laughs> <laughs> he just passes up. <laughs> <laughs> Last round goes. Make a rifle safer. Shooter ready. Shooter ready. Shooter ready. I did it! Whoa. Clean, right? Yep. Clean, yeah. Well done. I oh, yeah, really enjoyed watching. Unload and show clear. Yeah, and then you gotta center. share what you did for one. Uh, dead center. Uh -oh. Yeah. I did not expect that. Because the smoke coming off your barrel, it's going like straight down. I think uh, the wind is coming at an angle. Yeah, it's like, coming. But remember, this isn't a dead center. Okay, now I just shot the uh, more barrel stage. 12 rounds, three targets, two positions. Holy. Uh, I managed to clean it and my Voodoo did have another ejection issue. So it looks like this 360 that uh, is a replaced barrel to action is kind of doing the same thing, which is not great. Um, but now that I'm more aware of the issue, I'm going a bit slower and making sure I don't cause up a big jam, making sure the uh, shells eject correctly. Um, but it's not great in a, in a match situation because you don't want to, you know, use mental power to make sure your rifle is running properly. You kind of just want to trust it fully. And that's not happening here with the Voodoo, but I'm going to continue to run it because it is shooting really well in terms of its accuracy. Uh, I used the bipod off the uh, barrels here. It was a bit slippery just because these are like slick metal. Um, I actually just got this, uh, these pair of the Hawk Hill Talons for the Atlas Cal here from uh, Go Big Tactical. And uh, I actually really like these feet. They seem to grip on basically everything really well, um, obviously besides really slippery metal, <laughs> um, but I didn't really jam it in there either. I didn't want to damage the uh, barrels. But uh, yeah, I, I do like that over the stock rubber feet that come on the Atlas Cal. And I just used a rear bag um, throughout the stage, but I did have to ditch it um, because after I had to clear my little uh, ejection failure, uh, my bag slipped off and I, I was running out of time. So I decided to just try and stabilize the rifle as best as possible without my rear bag and take the shots, but it still managed to work. The, the last target was a good, uh, good size and I managed to clean it 12 out of 12. So I'm happy with that. Good.
Stage 19 was titled Head Hunting. All the targets were a silhouette of an army head placed at 121 yards, 146 yards, and 165 yards. On the engage command, the shooter would engage the targets from right to left with one shot each from three positions off of the spools. That gave you a total of nine rounds. Impact. One minute. Impact. 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 Yeah. That damn one point escaping me again. So I just shot the spool stage, a nine round stage. I got eight, so another point escaping me. Uh, once I start cleaning more stages, that'll be nice. Um, pretty straightforward. Again, I use the bipod with the Hawk Hill talons on there and a rear bag. It's basically just like shooting off a, a bench or a prone in terms of stability. Uh, wind was a 0.3 to 0.5 hold off the right side again or I should say from center not off the plate and uh, it was pretty straightforward so eight of nine for the stage I also used this trick again which is putting a little bit of a thin masking tape around the turret and marking my elevation that I need to dial so for this stage they're all pretty close together but it's nice because instead of having to look at numbers and then matching it with your turret you can just quickly do it on the fly and it just saves you know even a few milliseconds might help to get you that last shot sometimes Stage 20 was titled Valley. We were shooting into a bit of a dip into the terrain and this was shot off of a large spool. It was basically a nice comfortable kind of bench shooting position. On the engage command, the shooter would move to the top of the spool and engage the targets near to far with two shots each. There were six targets. This stage had five targets, so that gave you a total of 10 rounds. The targets were at 100 yards, 176 yards, 221 yards, 272 yards, and 363 yards. Big box. Uh, I'll get the pick, right? Yeah. Where the heck is it? Oh, yeah. it's not all. It's left it. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. Big box. Impact. 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 Impact.
Impossible. Impossible. Yes. Good Impossible. Good job. Oh, oh, what kind of wind were you yep. using? Uh, so, the middle of all these. <laughs> Which was? Basically, whatever. So here, I'll, I'll tell you, all these brackets basically fit on the plate. So I just shot another spool stage, which is uh, just one position, basically shooting off a bench and walking out, basically a troop line from 100 yards out to 363. I managed to clean it, so that's actually really nice, 10 of 10 points, and uh, wind call was fairly straightforward. I had a pretty big wind bracket, I don't know if you can see that, but I basically just held middle of all those. Most of them could fit on the plate, which is nice. The last two I favored uh, slightly more wind on the bracket and managed to hit everything. And the voodoo is working working pretty pretty well now. But I'm still taking my time. I'm not cycling the bolt as fast as I usually would because if one doesn't get thrown out, I'm going to cause a cause a jam, which is never fun. So basically the voodoo makes me shoot slower. <laughs> right? Because I'm, I'm taking more time. As you may have heard from the morning brief section of the video, Adam Cool had to unfortunately cancel and remove stage one from the course of fire. This is because the motor for the moving target for the stage finally died after two years of uh, trusty use. So I believe Adam is going to rebuild it for next year, but that was removed. And unfortunately our squad did not get to shoot off of the pretty neat barricade, which was the back of a crane, like a large truck. But we were on to stage two titled trailer. This was shot out of the the trailer that was pretty derelict again from just uh, total neglect I believe but it's a fun little uh, stage to shoot out of a trailer there were three targets at 135 yards 142 yards and 177 yards on the engage command from the window the shooter would engage the targets near to far with three shots each the shooter would then engage the targets again near to far but with only one shot each this gave you a total of 12 rounds it's three each. Yeah, it is. Yeah. We'll do one more on that one then. Yeah. Impact. 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 One second, I gotta check my, how do I check my turret? Okay, shooter ready. Fire ready? On it. Stand by. Three, two, one, engage. Get back. 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 Back. Fine, please. You are at one minute five seconds. Thank you. The back. The back. That's a big old whammy. Queen. Well done. Woo! With 10 seconds to spare. Good job. Thank you. Do you approve? I approve. I'm clear. Good shooting. Thanks, dude. I'll just leave this in case anyone wants it. Oh, I lost? Oh, I lost? 
<laughs> so who started this bad boy? I did. Rob, sure. then me. Clean the stage out of the trailer. It was actually a pretty interesting target acquisition. Three targets, three shots each walking out, and then one shot each walking out. So it's nice because you can kind of fine tune your wind call as you're walking out. That's exactly what I did. So after my rim lock today, I found a little trick in loading these voodoo mags. <laughs> it's a bit silly, but instead of pulling the follower down like normal, um, I just load it upside down so that they're always nose up. And uh, you know, gravity is my friend. And I haven't had rim locks since, so I guess this is going to be the method I use to load my voodoo mags from now on, is just holding it upside down. Now the, the rounds do spill out if you're not careful, so you got to be, you know, <laughs> you got to be a little careful, but it works. It's working so far today, I haven't had a rim lock since, since uh, loading them upside down. This brought us to the last stage of the day, stage three, titled Progress. This was shot from a little section of scaffolding. The shooter would first engage the first three targets from the right side of the scaffolding. Those targets were at 125 yards, 156 yards, and 196 yards. The target engagement for these three targets was one shot at the close one, two shots at the middle one, and three shots at the far one. The shooter would then transition to the left, or I guess front side of the scaffolding, 90 degrees to the left, and engage the far target with four shots. This target was at 225 yards. This gave you a total of 10 rounds. Impact. 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 So last stage of the day off the scaffolding, I managed to clean, which is really nice. Finished the day off with 10 of 10 shots. Um, it was pretty interesting, basically a 90 degree uh, pan from shooting the three targets here and then panning to behind me. Um, the wind was actually kind of tricky when I was shooting this direction because I wasn't sure if it was, it was basically a headwind, but I wasn't sure if I should favor left or right. So I kind of looked at the foliage and I held left uh, by like 0.7 mils and I managed to clean it 
So I was happy with that. Good, good way to end the day. In terms of the rifle, uh, it's been pretty good. Only the two failure to ejects, uh, and we shot eight, eight stages today, seven or eight, I can't remember. Um, so I'm gonna test it more, but I do really like the Minox LR. 5 to 25 by 56. Uh, reticle is great. I really like it. More so than the Athlon APRS6, but just by a bit. The APRS6 is fine, but I do prefer this one slightly, and the turrets are, are also quite nice on, on the Minox here. So either way, um, yeah, stay tuned for more content. <laughs> but today was uh, pretty awesome. This match, I shot pretty well. I really only truly, like, screwed up one stage where I got three heads yesterday on the big fat beavers. So, <laughs> all right. Good. All right. Sure I can do this. Is the lighting okay? What it's all right. All right. Say happy yeah. birthday, Matt. Happy birthday, Matt. Yeah. Aw. <laughs> I actually told you. And with our last stage wrapped up, this brought an end not only to the Northern Rimfire Series finale match, but also the 2021 NRS season. I managed to place 6th out of approximately 75 shooters at this match, which I was very happy with. I've seen myself make some big improvements in my own skills this year, and can't wait to develop them further in the offseason to come back stronger in 2022. I think we had a fantastic season for 2021, especially considering the administrative nightmares and COVID lockdowns that Adam had to deal with. I want to extend him a huge thank you and congratulations for running another awesome season for shooters to enjoy here. And another big thank you, of course, to the sponsors of the series, which also donated an enormous amount of amazing prizes for the prize table that we had at this match. This allowed many shooters to go home with a nice treat. Some of the notable items on the prize table included a Begara B14 barreled action, a Voodoo barreled action, a Cadex Strike Nuke chassis, multiple Trigger Tech triggers and Kestrel and many other awesome prizes that I just can't mention all in this video. I was lucky enough to snag a Trigger Tech Diamond off the table, which allowed me to finally finish my Centerfire build. That's right, I teased a Centerfire build a few times on my Instagram, and as you can guess, I will be doing a little bit of dabbling in the Centerfire world in the future. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video of the Northern Rimfire series finale match. Take care everyone. Cheers. This is a lot of stuff on the table. Just in certificates alone, there's over $12,000 in value, excluding other stuff that's on the prize table. Right? And the other stuff on the prize table, we got, you know, shotgun, barrel of action, you know, KDEX, uh, chassis, we got, you know, uh, Cytron scope, that's 850 bucks on its own. We got a Kessler Elite over there. Like this is not trivial stuff from these sponsors and they stepped up huge because without them, this is nothing and they, we, we won't be able to do this anymore. Like they get anything like that. They, you know, the least you can do is say thank you. The first thing we'll do is the uh, one shot challenge and it is card 57. Yeah. 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 Shot it right here, but good job. <laughs> But he's left handed. Yeah. Get a photo of that. Yeah, let's get a photo for. Thanks, man. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. So I'll start off with Top Junior for the day. And it was really tight. It was actually tied at 133. And it came down to about. Uh, Seven seconds on the uh, on that. So uh, Kaler maintains his spot as a uh, top junior at this match. Oh, that's gonna be. This is for the year. Oh. All right. And top production, we have Dan Castillo. We have John Gingrich with 173. Got <laughs> strong, good shooting. Good, 
And with 175, we have Brett Sharp. Brett. Yeah. 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 Yeah.